Hi guys, Tony Dubs here and today I'm doing a video overview on the ISO Color Edge CG279X. Now the reason this video is an overview rather than a review, even though I've reviewed over 120 to 130 different monitors of all sorts of types and uh, price ranges, is because this monitor is really aimed at professionals ones who are going to be video grading and I'm not that type of person I'm your average Joe who's gone through a lot of monitors but one that's going to be using it for gaming or browsing the web rather than real color grading so in this respect I'm going to just feed in my inputs and uh, run it through calibration software and gone through all the settings and played around with it um, for me to formulate some sort of an opinion however that is not to be um, deemed as something that you should really accept. As I said, it's an overview, not a review. But I'll be going through all the features as I would normally do on a review. So before jumping into it, it's very important to talk about price. Now this pro-grade monitor comes in at £1,700, so it is not cheap whatsoever. In terms of raw specs, it's got 1440p, uh, runs 60 hertz, um, and it's an IPS panel. So nothing overly exciting there for most people, and people would think they're crazy paying that sort of amount of money, especially when it comes to the game market. But this monitor is not aimed at your regular average Joe. It's really aimed at people who want an absolute pitch perfect, um, color accurate display, which works across different color gamuts and different color spaces. So without further ado, let's go into the overview and uh, talk you through the different features that the monitor offers. So first let's start off with the build quality and design. Now the monitor has a sort of slate um, black sort of look to it. Um, the monitor has height adjustment, it uh, pivots around uh, and can also swivel all the way around as well. The bezels, ISO said, um, they've really reduced it and have sort of slim bezels. I wouldn't call these chunky bezels slim by any stretch of the imagination. They're pretty chunky and they're pretty noticeable. It's a 27 inch display, um, so just bear that in mind in terms of fitting it around in terms of your desk or in terms of your setup uh, that you might have. Now around the back of the monitor, um, ISO have included a sort of like handle over here, a built in handle, uh, allows you to carry uh, the monitor. In terms of inputs, so um, display inputs, you've got um, uh, USB-C, which is new to this range. You've got DisplayPort, HDMI, and DVI-D as well. Uh, full specs can be found in uh, the description below via ISO's website. But nevertheless, um, it's a little bit disappointing not to see more inputs. Uh, so, for example, dual HDMI or dual DisplayPort or mini DisplayPort uh, for, for certain people. But it's good to see USB-C input as well. It uses a kettle plug as well uh, for, for your power. Um, on the uh, left-hand side, there is two USB uh, 3.0 ports. And um, these communicate via a USB port, which is connected to your PC. Now, this, port, uh, this USB cable is... Um, is needed for you to use the self calibration um, tool and I'll get into that in just a bit but you'll need this cable which is included in the box. Next up and quite fundamentally is the on, uh, little buttons over here. Now the, the illuminations can be disabled um, or uh, brightened up but these are touch based controls which usually I'm not a fan of but I must say um, ISO's um, monitor over here is very responsive. And these buttons essentially give you um, an access to the on-screen display, which is very much comprehensive. You will to hear at the background a sort of beep sounds, that's because I quite like it. It allows me to hear when I'm pressing a different button. But going through every single um, option over here, so for example, signal, as you can see, you can uh, see what the signal is currently and the, the, the refresh rate that's running at. I'm running 8-bit, for example, um, not on a 10-bit. Um, in terms of color, uh, you can see over here you can change the color mode. Now clicking on the color mode you can see there is a variety of preset um, and pre-calibrated um, uh color modes that you can choose. I use sRGB simply because that is usually the standard when it comes to web formats. Brightness, now this gets off to 400, uh, 400 uh, candela, so um, bright enough for uh, most common rooms. 120 is what comes off from um, the software and I'll get into that in just a bit. Temperature as well, I really like um, what you've what ISO have done over here. Um, you've got the different um, preset color profiles, uh, but then also you can go to native and then you can go through the um, 
individual uh, color temperatures, which is great because if you're going to be uh, editing in sort of different um, tones, you can do so and adjust it pretty much on the fly and as you can see, pretty easily. The gamma as well, you can change as well, um, as you can see. Uh, I'll just flick through these so you guys can see the options. Um, and again, I've just yet yeah, left it on the sRGB. Color gamut, again, um, options are um, over here that you can you can flick through. Um, and it's great, again, to see it included. Again, expected at this price and for this sort of a monitor. Advanced settings as well, you can um, enable gamut clipping if you want. Change the game, uh, black level and uh, the six colors as well. Um, now, moving into self-calibration, um, the self-calibration takes about um, 20 odd minutes. It really depends um, on on your setup um, and depends on you know the, the settings for example. So if I go into settings over here, mode settings, standard mode, you can go into advanced mode and you can see you've got all variety of different um, settings you can flick through. You can even have a schedule and you can uh, set the time you know if it hasn't synchronized properly with your um, with your Windows time for example or your Mac time um, then you can schedule certain times where you think you're going to have some downtime and therefore it can it can get calibrated and you can see uh, the last calibration was not too long about 20 minutes ago uh, which I did via the software which again I will show you do not worry now in terms of the screen you can change the aspect ratio you can have a luminance war warning and you can even set a marker which um, might seem a bit weird but a, a marker essentially um, usually it, it kind of comes comes up like a rectangular but nevertheless um, it has sort of a safety marker of, of, of where you should be editing for example preferences now these are more of the, uh, the preferences within the monitors settings so to speak so for example the beep uh, that you can enable disable USB selection if it automatically picks up or even in terms of the uh, the inputs uh, if it automatically picks up what you want or if you want it to be always set to a certain input again you've got languages again you can flick through um, and of course information about the display itself as I said before and this also includes serial number and what have you so the OSD is very much comprehensive and I like the um, the OSD buttons very responsive and even though I'm not a fan of touch controls in this respect I can really truly appreciate them because they really work flawlessly and are a great addition in order to quickly access settings or sort of color gamuts that you might want so let's talk about the software, the Color uh, Navigator 7. Now this is free to download um, via ISO's website. I'll link it down in the description below. And what it does over here, it, it really picks up the monitor. It's very, very simple to pick up. You don't have to be an expert, which you know I'll be surprised if you're not an expert if you're picking up this monitor. But nevertheless, now what's quite interesting is when you're using the software, it locks the OSD. It says locked at the bottom right, simply because this uh, software is then controlling uh, the monitor's OSD directly. So as you can see, potentially the sort of color temperature and the, the way that the gamma is shifting it is kind of changing um, based on what I'm selecting. Uh, it, it does it pretty much instantaneously. It takes a little few seconds to sort of apply. But nevertheless, um, over here you'll be able to flick through a variety of different things. So for example, if I just go into um, management policy, you can enable, for example, um, self calibration, or if you want to have it disabled, you can set a sort of time and a date. Um, uh, and then within that as well, you've got uh, target management, which means that you can um, select which profiles are being changed and which ones are going to be um, uh, customized, and you can add them as well. Um, within the tools, system information gives you a little brief uh, information of what your system is actually. So, for example, if you thought you were running 10 bit um, and you weren't trusting Windows for some reason, you could look at it through here. Um, you can even have a test pattern if you so wish, uh, as uh, sort of like a a reference point it, it kind of skews uh, like brings up a page uh, which is a, a certain thing that you can you can go through here you've got extensions which you can add um, other than that it's just a variety of different options and you can see essentially this is an extended on-screen display except in form of a software which actually is very intuitive and very easy to use um, and I, I must say I think ISO have done a great job in terms of um, pairing this up now in terms of the calibration feature, if I press calibrate over here, um, what it will do is tell me, hey, do you want to have a measurement device? So for example, I've got the i1 Display Pro. You can select that if I was if it was connected in. But in this case, um, this monitor has a built-in sensor. So if I were um, just to zoom out a little bit, you'll see at the top of the monitor, hopefully, well, it should pop up, um, you will have a little sensor pop up from the top and it will start its calibration process. 
Now we'll go through a pretty basic patch, but it's very quick um, to do its calibration. It takes roughly around three minutes to, to complete. Um, and as a result, it means that you're always gonna have a, an accurate sort of color tone and color profile uh, based on your ambient light. So right now, it's a lot brighter than it was when I actually, um, I actually calibrated it. So it might come up with a sort of slightly different result. Nevertheless, it's very intuitive, very easy to use, and the little calibration thing is kind of hidden within the top bit of the uh, the bezel. If you were to uh, quit out of um, the, the software, it will just take a little while because it saves the monitor settings, and you might see at the bottom right, sRGB selected, and then it means I can re-access uh, the on-screen display. Now, however, we're getting to the business end of stuff. The actual performance of this monitor. Now, bearing in mind I haven't tested it via its uh, HLG or PQ uh, gamma curve for editing in HDR. It's not something I could test, um, but nevertheless, it's something that actually is capable of. So if you're someone who's gonna be editing in HDR, you can use this monitor, but I can't, as I told you, it's an overview at first, I can't test all of its features and therefore it's not a review. I can't test those things, so I can't comment on them. But what I can comment on is in terms of um, its measurement report. So measurement report, I put it on the i1 Display Pro. Now, bear in mind it's a professional um, monitor. I would expect you to go through about four to 500 different patterns to get the perfect calibration. Now, in order to test the monitor, I ran it through its self-calibration first, um, and then ran um, I, the i1 Display Pro like I do with every single other monitor. And I must say, it was very impressive to see a average delta E of 0.81, which is absolutely ridiculous um, for a monitor. But you know, again, it's a professional grade monitor. You kind of should be expecting that. Now, it can it. it it went at 120 candela, uh, it gets to around 400 and you don't really see any sort of variance in terms of the average delta E. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that figure, it's just, just to tell you. Again, this was done to the sRGB standard set via sRGB on OSD and sRGB as a simulation profile. Um, in terms of the contrast, I just said they've kind of boosted it up to 1,200, 1,300 to one. I only saw about 1,030 to one as a 1,100 to one at absolute maximum. Just bear that in mind. Again, your mileage may vary, but that's what I actually found. Um, other than that, uh, it's sRGB values. Now, um, ISA told me that uh, this value is actually pretty low uh, for its standard. Um, what I got was 93.7. Again, you should be looking at the sRGB value only because it was done to sRGB. But I got 93.7 um, and 95.6 of the gamut volume, which in my opinion is very good, but um, ISA said you know this is pretty low. It should be hitting um, pretty much 100%. Now, the reason I've got two different ones over here here is simply because the first one was done uh, before the calibration of uh, the um, inbuilt calibrator and the second one was done after. You can see there's a slight variance between the two, a slight little increase and a little bit um, bettered uh, results which is great to see. Um, I also actually tested it in um, Adobe RGB and you can see also over here obviously it's got you know 99.4 um, uh, gamut coverage, but the gamut volume is completely off. You can see how this is calibrated to Adobe RGB because it's got 96.9% um, Adobe RGB, uh, which again is very impressive uh, to see. And you know, even DCI-P3 one, even though it wasn't set to that, is again very impressive in, in this in this respect. Um, and in terms of the actual uh, profile itself, how how it looks like, uh, you can see it's pretty much bang on. A little bit off in terms of the the yellows and a little bit off on the reds. Again, mileage may vary, but that's what I found. Another thing that's very important is a uniformity, brightness uniformity. Now, um, in this respect, very acceptable, but it's not absolutely mind-blowingly amazing. I've got a minus, uh, around minus 7%, 6.83% to be precise at the top left-hand side, a little bit of variance at the top left, uh, even over not, um, a minus 7.74 7 over here, minus 9.42. Um, very good results, but for a monitor of its class, I would have just expected a little bit better in terms of the uniformity. But that said, it's an IPS panel um, and it's gonna have its limitations in terms of backlight bleed. Now in terms of backlight bleed, um, when I put it in terms of backlight bleed tester, um, if I just uh, put that in, so backlight bleed tester, backlightbleed.com, you can just access this from anywhere. And of course, it's not gonna work on video, but um, never, nevertheless. Okay, anyway, you test it on this and you can see kind of like the backlight bleeds uh, that goes around on a, in a dark image. Um, 
as far as I could tell, yes, there's a little bit of backlight, I believe, but it's very minimal. Um, in comparison to most um, IPS monitors that you would find, this monitor is very much one of the best IPS monitors I've come across when it comes to backlight bleed. Very minimal backlight bleed, which is kind of reflected on the uniformity check uh, that I had over here. All I can tell you is that this monitor is very, very beautiful, very visually appealing to the eye. Uh, it looks amazing depending on what... Um, color profile you want and you know sRGB being the default kind of go-to for web formats and so for example for me browsing the web watching YouTube videos or um, um, even just you know, doing some basic video editing I was very impressed by what the ISO was able to deliver so there we go I mean my personal verdict and as I said this is not a review even though I've kind of made it seem like a review to be honest with you um, my my personal verdict is not something you should trust, but you know, just something from I can speak from experience and from other monitors. This monitor is absolutely stunning and it is fantastic for people who want a very color accurate profile and a color accurate monitor at all times and it's going to last you for a long time. Um, not only are you going to get a, a, a pretty good build quality, but you can get a really nice package. The thing you should really be asking yourself if you're a professional is, is it worth the extra premium or is it worth the extra um, investment if I've already got a pro-grade monitor? Well, that really depends on terms of connectivity. For example, if you want that USB-C input, if you want those, um, those HDR, HLG uh, sort of compatibility, if you want um, the software to work in you know, perfect harmony with your, your monitor and with the self-calibration tool and the, uh, the, the sort of self-calibrator which pops up. Um, is that something you need? And it's not something I can answer. It's only someone who's professional and who works in this field that could really be able to answer it. And the reason I say this is because it follows on from the ISO CG277, which is pretty old and outdated now, but essentially this is the kind of newer version of it. One thing I didn't show in this sort of overview is the shader hoods, and the shader hoods go around. The thing I was a little bit disappointed by, by the shader hoods, um, which I found on sort of gaming monitors, is the fact that the shader hoods usually, imagine I'm the monitor, you could kind of flip them back or flip them forwards. The shader hood comes on one unit, so you either have the top and the sides all in one um, sort of shader around, or you have none of it. Um, and, you know, the shader hood is actually right here. Um, so... You know, it, it's built you know really well, but you can't take apart this kind of thing. It kind of sits like this around the monitor. Nevertheless, um, it's great to see it included. Um, and again, at this price and for who it's aimed for, it's to be expected. So there we go, guys. That's been an overview of this monitor. Um, do let me know if you're a professional in the field, if there's anything that I might have missed that I could potentially, really, I'm saying potentially answer. Uh, then I'll try to. If not, I can ask ISO to answer that um, for you. Um, if there's anything you feel I've missed for future videos, uh, definitely let me know. More than happy uh, to, to listen uh, to that. Um, and, you know, for the average Joe, if you've been watching this video, I, you know, thumbs up to you because I don't know, um, you know, if, if it's a monitor you'd never get, so why would you watch this video? I appreciate it if you are watching this video. So um, there we go. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this overview. Uh, it's not been a review. I have to stress that enough. I can't really you know, tell you, go get this monitor, don't get this monitor, or yes, it's too expensive, or no, it's really cheap for what it's offering. Um, all I can say is, to my eyes, it looks stunning, and it's you know, a definite reference monitor that I would love to use, um, but unfortunately does have to, have to go back like every other monitor does uh, to their manufacturer. So there we go. Um, if you've enjoyed this review, ah, oh, I know I said it, the overview, uh, make sure you give it a like, um, subscribe if you want to see more, and favorite and share. All right, guys, I'm Tony Dub. Take care and bye-bye.